Roy Rogers' new secrets revealed about his sad death. Roy Rogers, the king of the cowboys, died on July 6, 1998, marking the end of an era in which white hats recognized heroes and heroes punished villains in time for one farewell song. So let's hear his story. Rogers passed away, sadly, at his Apple Valley Ranch in the desert about 90 miles west of Los Angeles as a result of congestive heart disease. He was 86. Multiple generations of movie, TV, comic book, and record listeners found pleasure in the singing cowboy. The people of Oklahoma, however, were particularly close to Rogers and his wife Dale Evans on their many trips to the state. They tied the knot in the Sooner State. Friends Bill and Alice Likens hosted the event in 1947 at their Flying L Ranch in the Davis area. Despite having appeared in numerous films together and Rogers having kissed his horse Trigger on film, their wedding day was the first time they were captured in a kiss on camera. The state of Oklahoma served as the backdrop for numerous of his westerns, notably Home in Oklahoma. Co-stars Rogers and Evans attended the October 1946 international premieres in Ada and Ardmore. Rogers' cinematic career was winding down by the 50s, but he was salvaged by television and a shrewd merchandising strategy that included everything from lunchboxes and flashlights to boots and toy guitars. Roy Rogers was a cowboy singer who toured the country, winning two national safety awards and dedicating a speech and hearing clinic. He was also a celebrity at the State Fair of Oklahoma Rodeo in 1968 and the American Indian Exposition in Anadarko in 1967. Rogers began his career as a performer in the 1930s, and he and Evans quickly became a dynamic duo. What a blessing it has been to spend nearly 51 years of my life with him, Evans remarked. There are repeats of the 1950s TV show that Rogers created, as well as his country music songs and his 87 Western films, including 26 with Evans. From 1943 to 1954, he spent 12 years at the top of the magazine poll of theater owners as the most popular Western star. Rogers rode around on his trusty horse Trigger, playing the role of the honest hero who would always fight fair rather than kill the mad guys and then sing about it. I like what he stood for and the principles his films portrayed, remarked President Clinton. As one of his admirers put it, today there will be a lot of sad and grateful Americans, especially of my generation because of his career. The show's signature tune, Happy Trails to You, included a clipping clop beat and a bass line and was sung by Rogers. His wife collaborated with him on this. His filmography featured such titles as King of the Cowboys, Song of Texas, The Cowboy and the Senorita, Don't Fence Me In, and My Pal Trigger. Whiskered Gabby Hayes was a sidekick in the movies, while Pat Brady was a sidekick on TV. The two most famous cowboy singers in Hollywood were Roy Rogers and Gene Autry. Rogers was a savvy entrepreneur who amassed vast fortunes in the fields of real estate, the Roy Rogers restaurant chain, and television production. In 1967, he created a museum not far from where he lived in Apple Valley. Rogers had the Golden Palomino stuffed after Trigger died in 1965 and put it on exhibit at the museum, much to Evans' dismay. Rogers and his family migrated west during the Great Depression where he got jobs as a truck driver, peach picker, and musician. He was an original member of the Pioneer Trio, later rechristened the Sons of the Pioneers. Tumbling Tumbleweeds and Cool Water were two of their most popular songs. Rogers made his film debut alongside the Sons in films like Rhythm on the Range. However, he parted ways with the band in the 1930s. After learning that Republic Studios was on the lookout for singing cowboys, he waited till the workers started returning from lunch and then sneaked in with them. He replaced Autry as Republic Studios' top cowboy when Autry left to serve in World War II. After they left Republic, Rogers got locked in a legal dispute with the studio's chief over whether actors had the right to share in the profits. Roy Rogers and Dale Evans were a popular couple, but their stardom never fit them. Rogers revived his musical career in 1991 and is survived by a son, three daughters, 15 grandchildren, and 33 great-grandchildren. That's all for today. We'll be right back with more videos soon, so don't forget to give this one a thumbs up and go subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.